What's going on, guys? Lita, Marissa, Pat, man. Where are you at? You're getting some real good treatment since your girl's in town. <laughs> hey, now it's on full screen. He's showing that. Oh, there you go. That's what you want right there. This is all we got right now. Where is everybody at? Jeez Louise. Maybe I should send a link again? Yeah. Does someone have it? Uh, Lita or Pat, can you guys repost this in the group real quick? Yeah, I can. Oh, I can't hear them. Oh, man. Oh, no, they're muted. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, man, the whole agency is supposed to be on these things. They knew it was you today. Um, <laughs> he's what? He's booking up the store. He was like, he's he's in the he was like in the middle of it. Yeah. He's nice to come in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Someone posted. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with Dom. Whoever's missing, not sure who it is. Um, looks like I'm just doing a sales coffee with my team and Lita. Sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Um, and Marissa. Marissa has no video. Marissa, you got to get a video. You know, I kick people out. That's right. Marissa. I'm going to turn video on. I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how the, the, the other candidates may run these. You know, do they usually give you some questions at first, or do they try to give you some some knowledge and then give go to questions? Knowledge and questions. Knowledge and questions. <laughs> That's what they do. All right. What's uh What's the hot topic of discussion? What What's uh What's something you guys want to want to hear some knowledge on? I mean, I really feel like this should just be probably straight questions that I feel like is what this should be. You know, I can give you knowledge on, you know, I, I gave everyone knowledge last time I did this on the investments and how to beat the investments and how slow they really do grow. And, you know, other than that, um, D, I love you, D. Always got some questions. So other than that, of course, we can at the very end touch base on the agency's goal this month and what we got to do each week to get there. And, and that's obviously a given, but it's yeah. wrong, but what's in the frame? 
Wait, is it is it still good on the It's good on here. Okay. Oh no, never mind. Oh memories. Right. <laughs> it's still good over here. Just can't have this thing being full screen. Oh, Brian's in the waiting room. Marissa said I'm trying. I can't, I'm trying. You can't. Well, I told her I, I said could you turn your video on Vince demands it. <laughs> Oh, thanks, babe. I demand it. <laughs> oh, God, it's so funny. I can't handle it. it. She holds so still. I don't get it. <laughs> Ryan looks like you just woke up. Look, this is him. You're, you're frozen. It's the Navy in him. Vince demands it. Oh, he's trying to be a little curly toe. <laughs> no, he definitely just woke up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, let's just do straight questions. I, just I, I feel like I teach everything all the time. I teach contingents, teach referrals, teach catch up program. You know, let's just let's just do some questions. Oh, you're booking someone? Yeah. Okay. That's like, oh, really? Nice. Good job. Yes, sir. D. So, um, I have a globe, like a globe lab sit today. What, oh, what do you do when you go about like, <laughs> like talking to globe labs? What do I do when I go about talking to Globe Labs? You ever sat with Could, like couldn't tell you. Never sat with one. Really? Yeah. They were few. They were few and far in between in Pennsylvania, yeah. and I remember going to one or one or two's doorsteps because that's what we were taught to do. And yeah. they were like, well, "Wait, we did what?" I'm like, "You filled something. You did something. You filled something out." Like, oh, okay. Well, we'll call you when we're ready. And I was like, yeah, "Well, you know, yeah. the thing is, we're union. We're only in the area." We're not even supposed to be dealing with you guys. We're, we're, we're just here because there's no field agents for Globe Life. So I got it. If, if you do want the insurance, you know, if you are sincerely interested in learning more about it, it doesn't make a difference to me what you do. Our, our stuff is, is at a union negotiated rate. Um, so you actually have to qualify for it. Globe is, is actually, you know, sponsoring you into the program since they have no way of getting a hold of you. They, they turned me over to, they turned you over to us. Um, so we've been in the area for about seven or eight days now. 147 members, you know, just gotta, just gotta get, you know, get, get through everything. I think it's more or less making it more about just talking to them, like making it more just about, um, Andrea, making it more about, uh, educating and not like, a. there's additional benefits and some you have to qualify for and all that stuff. I, I don't think you gotta really go that far. Cause that's just going to turn people off. They're going to want to, you know, they're going to assume that you're coming to sell them. But Globe Life, I mean, all I can say, guys, is just think about them and their shoes. They they filled out a probably a reply card in the mail through Globe and um, got this coverage just by putting a check in the mail and, and answering like several medical questions. And that was it. Yeah, it's most likely term. Um, if it lapsed, you know, I, I heard you had a good script yesterday, Dalton, that was fire. You know, we have a lapse lead, you know, it shows here in our system. This is Dalton Print with American Income, you know, of Globe show. Those here in our system that you know your policy has lapsed. Only reason I'm calling is because your policy has lapsed. Now in my line of business, that means two things: either you're dead or you change banks or something. And, and you're like, you're not dead, so I'm glad I'm talking to you. So you must have changed banks. You know, we usually don't see this. What, what's, you know, what, why did it lapse, right? And then I think they were like, oh, we do have a policy with you guys or something like that. And he was like, oh, yeah. he's like, you do have a policy with us. He's like, oh, okay, forget everything I just told you. He's like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was a good, but I looked again, it was like. A so that's how i'd hand them on the phone and then i mean as, as far as calling the laps though I would, I would use that same script and you know they're, they're going to tell you like oh we it lapsed because we we we, we didn't want to keep paying it they're going to probably talk about how some financial hardship came up in their life and you can be like okay you know that's totally understandable um i mean right now i'm sure that was the last thing you wanted to do was was not have any coverage you know, life is more uncertain than it ever has before. Life and health are more uncertain than they've ever have been before. So um, I'm actually one of the quality control managers at the main facility in Pennsylvania. Um, they just had me give you a call because, you know, obviously we don't see people not having any coverage and we're willing to do, you know, whatever we need or whatever it takes to, to get it back on for you. Um, like I said, We're a hundred percent union insur life insurance subsidiary of Globe, so we don't even work with the general public like you guys. But since they haven't been able to get a hold of you, 
and Globe Life only has uh, Globe Life has no field agents. Uh, they turn me over to you, um, and and you you now have access to our union negotiated rates, our union programs, and it's just my job to sit down with you and go over your coverage, educate you on what you lost, see if I can save you some money, maybe waive some of those premiums and get you get you covered again. That way the family's protected. You know, I would just be pulling stuff out of my butt a little bit. It's just going to depend on the client what they said they dropped it for. But if it's financial hardships, I'm going to lean towards exclus exclusivity um, and and the fact that I'm just here to help and how I'm I, I'm actually a quality control manager and I can I can waive back premiums. You know, I mean, with Globe though, does it give you the same PDF that it usually does? Mm, it's like uh, it's in the notes. It's like the, the like the policies premium and like when they got it. So instead of just it showing like the like the POS would. So I'm not sure if we could even waive premiums then if they're not like on our system, but I know on our system, yeah. you know, if someone's been lapsed for under six months, you can waive up to three months of their premiums to get them back on. What about over six months? I think you can still, but I have a sheet for it in the office. Yeah, over six months, I don't I don't uh, I don't think you can anymore. Um, what, do you, what do you mean? I thought it was that? a year. What by what? Like what if there are less than if they have a lapse? If it's policy. lapsed for less than six months, you can waive the. Um, do you have that thing I gave you, Faith? Well, no, I'm just thinking about how I had to go through all that reinstatement stuff. But I'm thinking it's it the year that I'm thinking about is they've had to have had the policy for at least a year, and then you can waive them. No, 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 that's not true. Okay. Well, do you have that sheet I gave you that has yeah. like three months do this, six months do this? Yeah. Could you find it really quick? Yeah. And then we can bring it back up later. But that's how I'd handle the globe. Um, mainly you're just trying to get your foot in, the, in their house and, um, you know, you can work from there with the while we're there, drop a little gold nugget about the no cost benefits. They'll be like, oh, wow, this is, and you guys are what again? American income. We're unionized, only unionized life insurance company in the country. These are things that their union dues pay for. And uh, you guys are going to have access to them as well as, you know, us trying to go over what you had and, you know, what you lost. And hey, by, by the end of the appointment on the phone, if you're on the phone, by the end of the appointment, Mary, uh, if I educated you on what you had and what you lost and you, you, you still don't want to put it back on, that makes no difference to me. It's just my job to show you exactly what you lost and what's available through the union program. And then when you go in there and you start talking about whole life, cash value, union rates, I mean, it's going to be a no brainer for a globe person. You know, they're not even going to realize, especially when all globe does is usually turn. I was going to say, in theory, it seems like it would be like a layup. Yeah. You just got to get in there. You just got to do whatever it takes. You got to have, got to have confidence on the phone. You got to have confidence and certainty and they're going to book with you. Yeah. Yep. Next question. Does anyone else have a question? Yeah, I have a question, Vince. Question. Um, with no banks on online banking, what's just, what's the, we have no other option. Uh, so there's been an email that was sent out about the banks. We can't use any bank. It's not a brick and mortar store. So what you can do is create them an online Huntington bank. That takes a few minutes. I think some people in here are probably better at that than I was. I uh, never really created too many online banks in my day, but pretty all, easy. it's pretty easy. Steven says it's pretty easy. Yeah. Can you hear us, Vince? Uh, yeah, no, I cannot. Trust. You guys are muted. Good trust. Good I could we unmute. Can you hear us talk? Oh, no, she's unmuted. Damn. If you like, if you really thought that like they could afford it, yeah, then it might be more. Talk now, Lita. Uh, no. Uh, no. There you go. All right, we can hear you now. Eric, you're late, man. Put your video on, bro. Unless you're not around a desk or a table, then just sit this one out. Marissa, I don't know what's going on with your video either, but I don't want to be picking favorites in here as much as I love you. Give you guys a few minutes with this and I'm just going to start moving people. Um, so yeah, brick and mortar store, uh, created an online Huntington Bank. It's my understanding that you can have access to it routing an account number within the same day that you create it, right? Yeah. You don't got to call in on that business day and confirm and anything like that, no, right? No, but they have to be approved. They have to be approved. Yeah, right? so. 
So they, oh, so they got to put the money so in. I mean, I only made one and the kid ever made. It. So how long does it take? It and they got to put the money in. So, but it takes two to six days for it to draft. You know, we hold these things in our agency till Wednesday at 3.30. If you're selling this person on Tuesday, obviously they need to have the money in there by Thursday. It's going to draft on Thursday. If you're selling these people on the Saturday weekend before, I mean, they got some time to get that money in there. They got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I didn't even make an appointment to drive down with them, go to the bank with them, whatever you got to do. <laughs> She's like, I'll just leave. <laughs> Versus like, I'll kick myself out. Um, but uh, yeah, that's as far as banks. Good question. Anyone on my not on my team have a question? Yeah, Lita, Andrea. Any I know Lita, you wanted us. We 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 couldn't hear you earlier. Do you have a question? I think, uh, Patrick said he did. Pat. Yeah, Vince. So how do you be like um, even handed when you get someone to pull their policy and it's like universal? Because I had a lady like the other day, and, and I was talking to Hans about, it and it sounds like I just kind of like made her feel stupid instead of being like, I was trying to help her out, you know? Yeah, so good question. So I always I always look through the policy for a good few minutes. I'll have her hold it up to the screen and I'll have her, you know, like if this keyboard, hopefully I don't drop this overpriced piece of Chinese technology, but if this keyboard was the, was the packet, I'd have them go like this literally so I can read the thing. I would do whatever it takes. Oh, a little bit closer. Okay, can you go to the left for me? All right, can you go to the right for me? Oh, right there. All right, back it out a little bit. Okay. And I would read things that I need to see, like I was teaching you guys in the workshops. You guys have those universal policies that that gentleman had that was collapsing as an example, if you're on my team. If you're not on my team, I can give them to you guys as well. Marissa, we can see you now. Um, but other other than that though you know i'll have them I'll, I'll have them uh hold it up so i can read a few things i want to get my my sentences ready i don't just want to go in blind and start beating it up aimlessly or anything like that uh, and that's why i like to have that 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 duplicate policy because it's it says right in that policy that i printed out for my team the guy was 40 years old his policy literally stated in two different areas that it was going to be collapsing by a certain date and to find out the premium to pay to keep it from collapsing, please call us, right? So I always, you know, just make sure the biggest things about doing it level handedly is, is obviously mentioning the universal and term and whole, you know, now whole life guys, whole life's a little bit different. We're going to go over the old school, traditional whole life. This is the only kind we're allowed to provide. Don't ever say sell. It's the only kind that we're allowed to provide through our union agreement because it's the only kind that's guaranteed. It may be a little bit more expensive, but you're paying for the guarantee, you know? And then at the end of whole life, I'll be like, you know, like I said, guys, this is true for the whole life, the old school, traditional whole life. Uh, we don't carry any of that stuff that you see on TV that came out in the eighties and nineties that relies on the stock market, like universal, variable, flexible, adjustable. You know, we're, we're legally not allowed to carry those because they, they go up and down with the stock market. So we're only allowed to carry the whole life. Any questions on the whole life? Okay, great. Now, when I get to the pulling their policy, and they go grabbing it. And the first thing they say is it says universal flexible variable. I mean, that's already, they're like, oh shit. I go, oh, yep, oh shit. So then they hold, okay, yeah, okay, hold up to the screen, universal flexible variable. Now, can you open to the second page for me? Okay, can you hold that page up? And I just look for things, look for things. And then I'll say, all right, guys, um, I think I've read everything I need to read. I'm just gonna show you in black and white. Uh, exactly how this works. Now, before I go into showing you how this works with what you have, uh, can you promise me something, Pat? Can you can you promise me that you won't shoot the messenger when I go through this? All right. No. All right, Eric, you're gone, buddy. One more question, too. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not done yet. Wait. Let me boot Mr. Barrios out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Report them. laughs> um, so then I'll be like, can you promise me you won't, you won't shoot the messenger? I'll go through it. I'll tell them, okay. So this is one of the, those universal life policies we talked about. See on the front page how it says flexible premium, adjustable life. That means they can flex your premium and adjust your death benefit. 
if they can flex your premium and adjust your death benefit, Mary, what do you think they're probably going to do knowing the more, you know, the, the older you get, the more expensive it is to that company. You think you're going to be making it cheaper or more expensive? Probably more expensive. Yeah, exactly. Right now it's nothing, you know, and then I'll be like, now, if you look in that second page that you were just showing me, see how it says words like initial premium, initial death benefit. Right. And I always have my little, my other little tools. You always got to bring paperwork. You always got to bring, you know, factual data with you. Like Grant Cardone says, you know, I always have a little scanned page of a whole life policy from our company and it's, and it's, and it's cover page says whole life. And then the second page where the values are, it shows straight fixed cash value growth. It shows straight paid up options. And at the bottom, it says 127 a year payable for 120 years. And it says face amount 25,000. It doesn't say initial death benefit, specified death benefit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say initial premium or anything like that. Right. So I won't say all that to him. I'll just kind of hint that I'll be like, now see how it says initial, see how it says specified. Right. So if you had some whole life, Mary, it would look like this. And I'll even share the screen if I had to, if I want to scan it into my computer, show them that. Right. So also you see on yours, how it says that that premium period is only going to last till this date. Right. So just look for a few things inside there. Pat, were you able to find anything inside of that policy that said wrong sentences that said like, yeah. Yeah, it said flexible, adjustable premium, like all that stuff. I had her read the, the premiums at 86. It said like premiums would be insufficient. She, she was just so adamant that it was whole life. And then I asked her if she's taken any cash value on. She said she had no cash value in there. So does that mean the policy like is lapsed? You know, and if they take the cash value out of a universal? There's, there's, so universal every... So I'd be, you know, I'd be like, I, I, I definitely, you know, I understand that, that, yeah. So universal has cash value. It should have some in there and they send them statements every quarter. They send them statements every quarter on the cash value. So she's not really going to be seeing what her cash value is unless it's from a projected standpoint, just by looking at her policy, I'd make her go grab a statement. You have one of those quarterly statements they send you every quarter. Okay. Right. And then if she has no cash, it, it, there should be some, if it had none, it would be lapsed. Was she still paying for it every month? Yeah. She said she was. Okay. I think she was just more mad that like, cause it was like, I, it was like a really tough book. Like she like, couldn't believe that we had to do like a final review for like her granddaughter's like policy or whatever. She didn't have one through us. And then I got, and then I did like the line at the beginning where I said, we're going to plug in all insurance that we have. And then I, I got her to pull the policy and then she just was like, I think she was just more like upset that I was like, right. <laughs> like improved yeah, it wrong. Sure. Yeah, for so sure. I, so I would have started that with, you know, what I just said, don't shoot the messenger, had her hold it up. I would have saw what you saw, flexible premium, adjustable life. I would have gave her the little sentence about how they can flex your premiums and adjust your life, what that means. And then I'd be like, you see how it says right there, you know, if premiums are insufficient, this may not last. Right. So, so here's the thing, and I'll give them like a quick synopsis. A quick synopsis. I'll be like, guys, these policies, it's it's <clears throat> it's nothing wrong you did. Excuse me. It's nothing wrong any of my guys or girls did that came out to see you to sign your daughter up. But if they were anything like me or the guys that I've trained, they should have went over this when they did. They pull this last time? No, they didn't. Okay, that's why I'm here. I'm a little bit more thorough than everybody else. I'm here to make sure everything's in a good spot. But this is a universal life policy. This is a huge, huge, huge concern. The, this is one of those stock market policies that I mentioned before. Remember how I said we're not legally allowed to carry the universal policies because they're not guaranteed? Right. So basically how these work back in the 80s, these came out as a new and improved version of whole life. And this is right from a Forbes article I've been using since day one. These are just, you know, a new and improved version of whole life. What they were designed to do Instead of growing a fixed cash value at a four and a half percent interest rate like whole life does, since the interest rates were so high back in the 80s, you could get 8% interest rate almost at, at, at any bank in that time of America. That was like the golden age of America. And if they were alive back then, they'll remember that. And I'll say, so since you're able to get 8%, 10% with investments in banks a lot, these came out to be an a new and improved version of whole life. 
they would be marketed as cheaper than whole life, like a term, but last forever and grow cash value, like, like a traditional whole life would. But the problem is the way that they would be able to guarantee, the way that they'd be able to give you a cheaper price is because they were growing that cash value at such a high rate. When you get older now, and the cost to insure you goes up every year from a business standpoint, they, it's going to cost them when you're in your 50s and 60s. That's when these things usually collapse, Mary. That's when these things go up, like your policy was saying. That's when the premiums usually are insufficient. But when you're 50 and when you're 60, Mary, it's not going to cost just this $40 you're paying right now to insure you. It's going to cost $100, $200 a month to insure you from a business standpoint. But they still got you down here at that cheap price from back in the day, 30 bucks a month. Where do you think they're getting the difference from? The cash value, exactly. So what they would what they would do to be able to tell people that it's gonna last forever is they would try to grow a lot of cash value up front so that when your cost of insurance rates went up when you got older, the large amount of cash value they grew would essentially pay for that difference well into your 70s, 80s, and 90s. And I'm looking for heads to be shaken when I'm with a client at this point, or I know I'm not doing it right, right? I'm gonna go, I'm probably gonna just repeat the last two sentences very clear again. Doesn't matter how many times I gotta do it. And I'll be like, right, so the, the, the thing is, now here's the concern, Mary, they're pulling out of this cash value to fund the difference, but those projections aren't what they used to be in the 80s. What's happened with the stock market every 20 years? It crashes, right? It goes up, it goes down. So now they're not getting enough growth out of this cash value anymore. And you're sucking, you know, 300 a month out of it more than it ever has before. And it's actually going to be draining more than it's growing. And that's the point, like your policy says, where they're going to tell you your premium is insufficient. And they're going to ask you for a couple hundred, three, four hundred dollars a month. Or the policy is going to collapse. And you're going to say at that point, Pat, what about my cash value, Mr. Insurance man? And they're going to say, sorry, Pat, the cash value has already been drained to pay for the difference. There is no cash value left. So now you have no cash value. And if you don't pay this higher premium, the policy will collapse. Now, it's nothing wrong you did. Like I said, it's nothing wrong any of the guys or girls did that provided you with this. Back in the day, people didn't even know what they were providing they were told that these were the best things since sliced bread. That man actually may have thought that this would last forever for you, Pat. So it's nothing wrong he did, nothing wrong State Farm did, but these days, these just aren't designed to last forever like whole life. They're designed to grow a lot of cash up front, which it may have done really well, but in terms of guaranteeing something forever, these aren't the policies that I'd want my mom or, or my, my dad to have or my brother or sister. So the good news is, if you go grab those statements, you may still have some cash value left in this thing. And we can make sure that before it starts to drain, you can take as much cash out of there as you can and put it towards as much whole life as you can while we're out here today, while you're at your cheapest and youngest. And then hopefully at that point, I did it so lightly that she's not very upset. Uh, you know, that's about as level-handed as it can get. If you wanna get more level-handed, you have Googling, sharing your screen, Googling universal life lawsuit, watching State Farm pop up first, second page, not even page, like first, second entry on Google will say $22.7 million universal life, you know, 20 jury awards, policyholders, $22 million in, in lawsuit settlement due to mishandling universal life funds. That's literally right there on, on, on Google. Credentials on there, AIG's on there. Then you got the Forbes article that's from 2013 that literally just went through exactly what I just said. This is a new and improved version of whole life. They used to tell policyholders it does this, but now many Americans are facing retirement disasters because what these do, and it literally just goes through what I just said, but it's from a freaking Forbes article instead. If they're not really, if you don't think you got good credibility and good trust going with them and they're already questioning everything you're saying, I'd probably stop right there with the personal advice and the personal beating it up and go towards factual somebody else, Google, worksheets, documents, 
even if I didn't have anything in her policy as proof, I could use our whole life cost of insurance page, show her the difference compared to her cost of insurance page. I can use the AIG policy that I printed out for everyone on my team that literally shows another guy having the same thing happen to him. I can use that article and I can say, in a nutshell, Mary, um, you can do what you want at the end of the day. If you can afford this $30 a month, go ahead and keep this universal policy. I legally can't tell you what to do. They're just not designed to grow for, they're not designed to last forever. So keep this, keep watching those statements. If it's increasing every quarter, that's great. But as soon as you start seeing those statements show your cash value decreasing every quarter, I would highly advise you to pull the cash out of there before it's done. And they'll be like, yeah, pull it out before it's done. Right, right, Vince, right. But still today, you're never gonna be cheaper, younger, healthier than you are right now. So we gotta make sure that you have something small, at least that's guaranteed. I mean, you did a good job. You did a good job grabbing this. You did a good job getting protected. If you do die in the next couple of years while this is in force, it obviously will, will pay out, but it's just not a guarantee. You do want something that's guaranteed for the family, right? You did say you wanted something like the whole life, right? Like we ask them in term and whole, which one would you pick to protect your family? You did say, okay, great. So as much as I see a need, as much as your family needs this, as much as this needs analysis wouldn't be good at this job, yada, yada, yada. I just got to see if you can even qualify. Next question. I think I saw Matt Brown. Oh, yeah. I was just going to add to what that was. Um, okay. Because I had a, a, a family where I did a universal policy for them. And, um, you know, I could see that they were a little stressed, a little bit, you know, frazzled. Yeah. And so I was like, you, you know, you guys, I don't want you to feel like, you know, you did a bad job back then. Because back in the 80s, this was like a great idea. Yeah. It really was. Um, yeah. And and so you 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 guys did a good job because you, you're covered. You know, you know you needed the coverage. It's just that this wasn't permanent. And, yeah. And we needed something permanent, right? Right. Then, then they just answered it for you. Right. And then, and then honestly, you know, I, I sometimes if they're a little bit smarter and they're like in their fifties, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll be like, you know, Joe, it was essentially the same idea that killed off the pensions in the two in the early two thousands. You know, they used to say 401ks were more flexible. They could grow more. They could earn more. They were more diverse and you'd be better off when you retire. It's the same argument they used to kill off the pensions. Pensions were a guaranteed death benefit or guaranteed benefit, a guaranteed monthly payout, just like the old school whole life is. Same thing Universal did with the whole life. They they tried to you know kill it off and say that it was this, that, and the other. And they'll be like, huh, I remember that. Yeah. My company just dropped my pension and only did 401s. That makes sense. Um, anyone else have a question that's not on my team for now? I want to do people that aren't on my team first because I don't get time with them. I have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, so when they do, so you're talking about like if they surrender, right? The policy for cash, like, are there any penalties or anything if they actually do terminate the policy for universals or can they just surrender it and get their money back kind of yeah so good question so with whole life there's never a surrender charge with universal there is a surrender charge and i would level-handedly add that in as well because probably a, a, some way along this journey they're going to either be so trustful of you they're going to ask you what should i do I said well if i were you if you can afford this and still get the whole life you need today with me i'm already assuming the sale if you can afford this and still get the whole life you need with me today, I would keep it, watch the statements every quarter. When the cash value starts going the other way, 50s, 60s, go ahead and take it out. But they want to drop it right now. I'll be like, okay, all you got to do is call them up. Mary, I'd highly suggest to tell them it's a family emergency. I would not tell them that you're dropping it because their policies are, 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 are trash, right? <laughs> um, because you're going to be a little bit more favorable if you tell them it's a family emergency they, they might not give you a surrender charge, which is very true. They really won't, you know, they'll try not to at least. Um, so I would advise if you want, we can set up a day to call them together or we can call them right now. We can call them tomorrow. That's the other thing. If it's a business day and you ain't getting enough from the documents, from the policy, call the company, call the company and ask them, 
pretend to be the client, have the phone on mute, have the client speak, unmute it, tell the client what to say, mute it, have them speak, unmute it, tell them what to say, mute it. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Be the leader, be the professional. And, 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 and I always have two questions that Kiefer gave me, James Kiefer, that I have him ask. The one is if I continue paying the same premiums and I never change it, is there a possibility that this policy may lapse? Is it possible that my policy may lapse before I die? Right? The company's going to say, yeah, on the phone. They're either going to tell you straight up, yes, or if they're really trained, like most of those universal companies are, they're going to say, we'll send you an illustration on that. We'll send you an illustration. We'll send you an illustration. Now, how long does that take? Oh, seven to 10 business days. Oh, okay. So you just want us to forget about this is what you're saying, you know, because that's what they do. Every illustration I've tried to get, they tell me there's a seven to 10 business day turnaround on it. Why do you think they say that? Oh, I'll just keep it. Yeah. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll literally mute the phone and be like, why do you think they're waiting seven to 10 days? Right, Mary? We already have the illustration, right? In your policy. We already know the premiums are going to go higher. Now go ahead and ask them this, Mary. Is it possible that I'll have to pay a higher premium in the future to keep my policy active? And she might just say, I'll send you an illustration again, which looks even freaking worse. Or she's going to say yes. So here's those two questions right here. Can you guys see that okay? Thank you. People on the screen. Yes, you could. Here it is one more time, a little bit bigger. You guys want to snap a picture? Now's a good time. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll send it to Chicago as well. It's a good idea. But I feel like it's going to load blurry because I'm an Android user. Mm. Uh, 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 Only get the iPhone, dude. Don't buy any other Apple products out there. Get the See, that's the worst part. It's like the only thing they got. Uh, but yes, there is surrender charges. Um, so if they're like, well, I want to drop it now. Do I have to pay a surrender charge? Marissa, I'll be like, yeah, open up to your policy there. The surrender charge page is going to be probably pretty deep in that inside that packet. And there's going to be, you know, decimals all down this 10 year period. And uh, what you're going to find is it could be a 10 year surrender charge period. It could be as high as a 20 year surrender charge period. You know why? Because their money is tied in the stocks. It costs them money to get it out of there and it costs time to get, it takes time to get it out of there. That's why they do that. But it will, you'll see, it will say surrender charges per thousand. So essentially, if she's got a $50,000 policy, I'm going to take 50 and I'm going to multiply it by this decimal, depending on what year she's in. So she might be five years in, I'll multiply 50 by 0.7, which I don't think that's going to be the real number. These surrender charges aren't $7 or anything like that. You know, they're a lot more, um, but you'll see the decimal there. You multiply it by the death benefit per thousand, and that will essentially show you the surrender charge off of their cash value. So in our policies I gave my team, there's a good example of that right in the policy. There's a surrender charge. I think it's like the first 20 years. This guy was like in his 10th. He had about $1,400 left over in there. When I did the surrender charge, it was about a thousand or like 1200. He was like, are you effing kidding me? He's like, I'm only going to get $200 out of my $1,400. And that's when I was so glad I said, don't shoot the messenger. That was a perfect example. I set that one up real nice and level-handed. 
But that's how you tell what the surrender charge is. Go to the policy, go to surrender charges. It's just like a, any book. If you went to high school, you should know how to go through a book, use the index, use the table of contents. Go to the you know surrender charge page, you'll find those decimals, and that's what's going to be subtracted off of the cash value. And, and, and that's that's the value they'll have left. Now, some companies on their statements will go as far as just telling you straight up current cash value, current surrender value. Surrender value is them already doing this math for you. So you'll see their cash value may be two grand, but it says current surrender value is 500. That's because they already did all the surrender charges for you based on that month's statement. So surrender value is what the client will get after all the fees, taxes, and surrender charges. Current value is what's really in there right now. Cash value. Okay. Any questions on that? Marissa? No, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, next question. Let's see here. Yeah, I just wanted to clear something up. So when basically when they start getting charged more for their premiums, it's because their cash value is gone. Um, it doesn't always mean it's gone. A good company will will start to see the trend coming. A good company will start to realize their current premium they set them up with in a few more years, based on cost of insurance rates and your current premium they'll start to see that the cash value will drain to nothing and they'll in efforts to prevent that they'll start raising the premiums a little bit earlier like a you know a properly funded universal policy should be almost as much as the whole life policy that's all whole life is is a properly funded universal policy they start charging you way more at the beginning because they know what they need as a company to guarantee you this death benefit and still make a profit so, so just because they're raising the, 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 the premiums already doesn't mean it's necessarily gone, but it definitely means it's in the danger zone. <laughs> if they're raising them right now, it's not like they're just going to stop raising them. They'll have them raised for a few years. They'll raise them again in a few more years. It just all depends on how that policy's cash value is being invested. Now, if someone's 60 years old and they have $40,000 inside their universal policy, I'm probably not going to tell that dude it's going to collapse before he's dead. You'll see that sometimes. People will have a properly funded one since the 80s. The company came out, took care of them, restructured it, repriced it. They got 40 G's in there. That 40 G's can pay for that dude until he's 80, if he's 60. Possibly. I'd still probably try to throw them like a 10 to 15 to $30,000 policy just as a guarantee. Just being honest. Yeah, man. I mean, you got 40 grand in there. That's great and all that. But at the same time, I mean, if we do the math here, look, go to his cost of insurance page. Do the math on his cost of insurance. It could possibly drain down uh, to, to be zero someday. We just don't want to risk it. We want it. We want, we want we want this policy to stay. I'm not going to tell you to cancel this. I think this policy is in good shape right now. But you did say you wanted something that was guaranteed. So you can you can grab something small with us today. Keep this policy going. Or you can grab something really, really big with us today and take this $40,000 out right now. Keep it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen someone's universal with that much in it. Yeah, a few times. I, I sat down like I said, that happened to me a few times. I watched Gio do it. I was like, what is going on right now? He was like, yeah, this is good. The dude had every page laminated too. <laughs> he had every page of his policy laminated in a, in, a, in a book and everything. It was, it was definitely, the dude knew what he was doing. I have it recorded too. It was like, the next set Geo did was like even worse. I was like, wow, I'm like, I'm so glad I'm recording this because it was it was not Geo, man. He was nervous or something. It, it was it was hilarious. He, he's like, what? He's like, that wasn't bad. I'm like, that was that was really bad, man. I've been watching you for three months. <laughs> so I still I still have that. I like to pull it out on someday soon. Um 
other than that, guys, anyone else have any questions? I'll go into some. Uh, I'll go into a few things here. Oh, I got a question. So, um, has there been like, a, like, a, I know we were talking about certain people, like if you're just saying they take like one medication for like blood, high blood pressure, stuff like that, they're like starting to get trialed now more than like four. What is like the new kind of guideline that we're like, of like, of trials? Wrong question or something. No. Yeah. <laughs> Pat knows all about trials. It just yeah. feels like. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like someone. There's an email auto trial list, auto trial medications. There's an email okay. that I sent you guys. Check your emails. Check your emails. It's the private. Yeah, but like, why, why blood pressure so trial? What? When do people get trial grabbing my blood? You can't be a T2 and have high blood pressure, apparently. Oh, you can't be fat and have high blood pressure. Oh, we just say they want to be fat. You can't be. It's not lining up with the top of the stage. You can't. You can't. Okay. All right. Next question. Anyone have any questions left? Your height weight ratio is getting a little bit off. No? Okay, no questions. Um, what's your favorite color? My favorite what? Band. You say band? I said colors. You said green. Oh, they said my favorite song is Green Day. Green Day. Green Day. Green Day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. Like perfect imitation. <laughs> <laughs> So, I like the Green Day hair going on a little bit. Why don't you talk about I fucking dyed green for a concert? Whoa, I'm sorry, I'm swearing. Why don't you talk about leading up to the last week of April and how we can actually hit these commits? Oh, that's a good idea. Absolutely. That's what I was trying to definitely implement here at this sales coffee at some point. No questions left. Um, you know, guys, le leading up to the to the last month of April, I was I was kind of telling my team this. Um, these next three months or these next three weeks, you guys got to be be like growing and developing in the in the sales process. You know, we got to be getting used to rolling contingents, collecting contingents, contingents and referrals are probably going to be the only way we'll hit our commits that we gave for you know the the last week of April. Um, so it depends on what your goal and commit is. I mean, I'm not sure. I can't really coach you up to, to a, to a goal that, that, that you can't see, but or that you don't have, um, does everyone have that's not on my team, a goal and commit for the last week of April, Andrea, Marissa, Lita. We want to go over like the numbers, like on just sales to the mindset, what you should work on each week up leading up to it. Or like, should you have like a staggered goals, like four, you know, just five, you know, like seven. your goal is like 10k last week. What should you try and hit each week leading up to that? That way, it's not like you're just flaming I mean, and then all of a sudden have to pop. 10k out of your butt, you know. Yeah, I mean, I would just try to work up to that. Like, if your goal is to put, you know, 10,000 ALP on the board for the last week, you know, of April, the second dance. I mean, you guys, I would just get referrals. That's all I would do. You know, like week one, you obviously want to be doing anywhere between, you know, two to 4k. You know, week two, same thing. I would just start climbing. I would just get up to even further, you know, three to five now. Week three, I would get closer to, you know, four to six. You know, odds are, if you keep climbing like that, you're going to be pretty close to at least by, at least close to 6K, you know, in, in a week. And then each of these weeks, you know, you're sitting down, you know, to get 4K, you're going to need to have 
like 12 presentations, maybe even more like 15 presentations. So you can get five sales, you know, so I would aim for, you know, 15 presentations a week. That's going to get you five sales. You know, times hopefully anywhere between 800 to 1,000 ALP. But let's just say 800, right? So that's 4K a week right there. You know, and I would just start increasing it. But 15 presentations, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't know who runs in here on Saturday and Sunday besides us, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 15 presentations. We're talking just four presentations, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, about five days. So we're talking three presentations a day. Uh, that's all I would really, if you can just get consistent with giving three presentations a day, a field day, I mean, you're going to do things you never thought were possible before. You're going to find random 5K deals like Faith did the other day. You know, you're going to find a family that really appreciates the program more than anybody else. They completely are sold by what you've told them. The program is exclusivity. And you're just, what your main goal would just to be out of these 15 presentations, you know, I would aim for collecting 10 referrals in each house. And that's easy. A lot of us are doing that already in one sit. You know, so now you got 150 referrals, man. 150 referrals a week. You can't tell me. I mean, you'll be able to burn through them all. Get all your wire there's all your mistakes. If you haven't run referrals before, you'll get most of your errors and mistakes out of the way. You'll probably not sell some because you're not good at referrals just yet. You'll, you'll keep refining your why we're there for the referrals. You'll keep getting better at referrals. And you know, by the time week four comes along, you would definitely want to come into week four with eight to 11 presets on for Tuesday and Wednesday. Right. And, and, and half of those should be referrals. If all of those are referrals, that tend to happen in probably by, you know, Saturday night. Because who can tell me the closing ratio on referrals? 66. 66 to 75 percent. Right. So you come in with eight to 11 presets, half of them are referrals. We're talking three sales right there just from presets. Mm. When you book the appointment, like, or if you're just trying to have them, maybe like just create a text uh, and have the client send send your uh, your refs the text and say that like I'm leaving the area this week, but I will be back at the end of the month. So you know we should we should we, we obviously can't do it until then. And you know, that way you got to book that one. I would, I would just I would just get the referrals and run them right away. Just keep getting referrals, keep running them right away. So time will do its own diligent. Time will do its own thing there. You know, you don't got time to come back in a week. I'll never, they'll never, they'll never be around. Referrals, the older they get, the quarter they get, unfortunately. You got to call referrals right away. That's the biggest thing I'm talking about in weeks one to three is actually practicing and implementing calling these people out of the house. They don't know your script, they're not part of the union. You can't possibly mess it up. Just try it, especially on no sales. Now on a sale, it's even harder to mess up. But on a no sale where it's you know easy to mess it up because you're kind of nervous because you didn't even sell the client. You know, we're talking on a no sale, we're talking contingent beneficiaries and insurance referrals. You know, obviously it might be a little bit tougher because the client didn't even buy. But that's when you can get all your, your trial and errors out of the way of how to say it over the phone and, and rolling people that are no sales. You might get someone saying, Hey, I talked to my sister and you know, I'm good, man. I don't, I don't really want anyone coming by. I'm not going to go over any insurance. My sister said you were there for two hours. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Now the next time I roll referral on a no sale, I'm going to say a little bit, that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to structure my phone call a little bit differently. I'm going to roll into the same day. I would just start rolling people to the same day on zoom, you know, but, but yeah, I'd run them each week. You know, you might aim for 15 presentations this week and probably only get, maybe only get eight, maybe only get 10, right? Know where you messed up, know why and how you missed those presentations. Was it your fault? Were you in a sit for too long? Did you not do a good enough uh, solidification on the phone? 
I mean, we should already know this stuff by now. You need to be honest with yourself and self-evaluate. Why am I not getting presentations? Why do I have 20 appointments booked, 30 appointments booked in the week? And I only saw six of them. I only saw two a day, one a day. I mean, that's a problem. I would not keep continuing and sleeping easy at night. I would be freaking out. Something's wrong. It's my fault. Solidification on the phones. And that's really all it can come down to is, is the phone calls. And if you're having a problem with that, week one and two is going to show that. And that's why you want to start collecting referrals and getting good at those because there's nothing the referral can really tell you. I mean, those are going to show. The closing ratio matches the show ratio. That's 66 to 75%. I don't know what's happening with these markers. 66 to 75%. That's going to be the show ratio too. So I would just work on growing and developing in the area of more than three presentations a day and just making it a goal, making it a mission to rule at least two people out of each, out of each home. It might be all for nothing. All two from one no sale might not even answer. They might no show you. Don't stop. Just keep doing it. Just like with the with the unions and the leads, same stuff. We didn't stop after getting no show, did we? We didn't stop after not getting a sale with the unions. Sometimes we go a whole week without getting a sale. We keep calling them. We keep booking them. Why should we change with the referrals? Got to keep trying. Got to keep getting good at it. Gio made a $3,000 sale in one night because he does how to show high options. And it was a contingent. But they had no coverage in their 50s. There's nothing special about Gio besides his big heart and selling, him, selling them on him. He's like family when he gets in there and he knows how to show big options. And they know that they need it because he's been saying it. And then he shows it to them and they're thinking that's what it is. That's what everyone does. That's what he recommends. That's what we're going to do. There's a third of your 10K right there on one sale from a contingent, from a contingent. I'll wrap this up with like contingent beneficiaries. Like how are we having issues calling contingents? Are we just sissying out? Especially my team. I've been saying this for four weeks now. I don't see any referrals on the board. What are we doing? Hard cards all need a contingent collected and rolled. We have hard cards. Sabrina Lloyd doesn't have hard cards down the street. They go and sit at truck stops. They have child safe and that's it. Sounds like a hard job. Yeah. And they still make it happen. Because Sabrina Lloyd is a hell of a leader, probably. She's in there making people do burpees for yawning. I would have had you doing 10 burpees already, Matt. Burp 10 times. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't have a problem collecting them. I like, I think it's like they're not showing up. Like, think it's like they're not showing you know, up? Like, I, like, I just, like, the other day I had, I don't know if it's because they were from the same family. I don't know if they talked to each other. Was like, it a sale? Yeah. You put them down on the schedule for when? A day, two, three, four out? What, what, how many days out? Uh, like, I called them maybe a day after, and I put them on for like, no, it was like Thursday. It was like call night, and I put it on for Saturday. And she no showed. Yeah, and then the other one I had canceled. Why she canceled? She texted me and said I'm canceling the appointment. Sorry. I would have called her right back and be like, you can't. She was in the union too, and I was like, can't cancel. You set it up wrong. That's probably what happened. Yeah, so I'm saying I don't know what I'm doing wrong on the phones that they don't want to show up for their, especially for their contingent. Let's hear your contingent phone call. Hello. Come on, Faith. Hey, Vince. Hey, Vince. This is Faith Jones with American Income. Sat down with your mom the other day. Did she let you know I'd be giving you a call? Uh, mm, did she say yeah? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. You know, I we, we sat over on the Zoom call the other day, and you know, I probably spent a little longer than I should have with her. You know, she was she was a talker. She was telling me all about you guys and all your nicknames. Ha ha, report, report, report. Okay, so the reason why I was calling those is because she actually put you down um, as a, one of the beneficiaries on her life insurance policy through the union. And so what that means is, God forbid something were to happen to her, you might have to be the one that would need to file a death claim. Might have to money. be, take that out. Yeah. You would have to be the one to file a death claim and claim the money. And so I was just giving you a call because we have to first make sure that you make, 
accept the responsibility. So, you know, Vince, do you accept that responsibility of being yes. a beneficiary? Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. Now, since you do accept that responsibility, what we have to do is make sure that you get out all the proper forms, you know, the claims forms, the proof of death forms, basically all the paperwork that you would need to file a death claim, God forbid something were to happen to her. Now, um, usually we do all these appointments in person. Now we're doing them virtually through Zoom. Are you familiar with Zoom? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, you know, we've been in the area now for the past eight or nine days, you know, getting all these benefits out to over 147 union members like your mom. Um, she was one of the last ones we had to get caught up with before we left the area. So all we got to figure out here is a good time where we can sit down with you and the spouse and then, you know, get you all the paperwork that you need. You still work during the day shift? Yeah, five to seven works. Okay, perfect. Five to seven all right, we show. solidified. What do you say last? And then I'm like, then the thing at the end, I'm like, oh, by the way, you know, um, since you are a beneficiary on your mom's life insurance policy, you actually have access to all the same union benefits that she does. But, you know, I'll go over that on Monday when we meet. Um, either way, I got you my schedule here. and look forward to meeting you then. Okay. So, it's either something you told the client or something that you told her, the beneficiary, over the, like, it's something that you told somebody in the house about why you got to sit down with them, or it's something that you said wrong in that phone call. I don't know which one it was, but there's obviously some reason that that lady thought that she doesn't have to sit down with you to be the beneficiary on this life insurance policy. Because in reality, if I'm telling you, I have to sit down with you to make sure that you accept the responsibility. And if you do, you know, I got to sit down with you, right? Who would no show that? You know what I mean? So there's something wrong where they didn't believe you. They didn't trust that what you were saying was right. Or what you told the client was sounded salesy because it wasn't like, just keep doing it. You just got to keep doing it. Like how many was that? Like your, how many... Like, which attempt was that out of all, like, contingency rolled? Maybe your fifth, tenth? I rolled a lot more contingency than that. You rolled a lot? That one wasn't rolled. That one was, I just called Called them. them later. Did they ever know show you any other time? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had contingents that have rolled no show me. I've had referrals that have rolled no show me or referrals that have called later no show me. Yeah, referrals is one thing. Contingents should not be no showing. Yeah. So contingents... I feel like some people are just like lazy, like they just like will set the appointment at the time, and then when yeah. it happens, they're just like, yeah. I just well, if it's like a if care. it's like a lower income, like lower quality type of person, then maybe. Or like a younger, like I know this lady yeah. was like younger, like she's like in probably her early thirties. Like yeah. it's even I, I don't think I was like I guess I just didn't make it seem as important as it should. Yeah, be. exactly. Like, oh, whatever. Exactly. I tell them right in the home. I'll be like Mary. I'll be like. Okay, now, now you got your daughter and your, your son down. Okay, now they live over here. Great. All right, now, due to the $1.7 billion worth of life insurance that went unclaimed in 2013 alone, and the fact that it's been following that trend ever since, um, they actually have us get in contact with your beneficiaries and sit down with them and, or uh, get in contact with them, give them a call and make sure that they, one, accept the responsibility of being a beneficiary, and two, if they do, it's just our job to go sit down with him and his wife, get them out the proof of death forms, claim forms, all the necessary beneficiary paperwork, and just let them know what their responsibilities would be, God forbid that day ever comes. Does that make sense? You think they're okay with that? Okay, great. Get their verbal okay right there. Wrap up the vibs. Wrap up everything else. Did you make them an insurance referral using vibs? Well, this is the way she gave me 15 referrals. And at the end, I was like, which of these, like, would, okay. would really want this. But did you say, who do you know that needs this? Who do you know that can benefit from this same way you did today? Now, of course, when we go sit down with your two beneficiaries, we'll make sure they're in a good spot as well. Did you say that? I don't know if we're going to the beneficiaries, but she already had given me well, there, people. That's, so there, like, there's the problem then. Because you didn't tell her that you're going to be using them as an insurance referral. You didn't tell her that you'd be going over it with them. And then all of a sudden on the phone, you tell them that she's going to have access to the same benefits. She calls the client back. The client says, I didn't tell her she could call you about the benefits. I didn't set that up. I feel that. But also, like, for this particular lady, like, I was, like, I turned them all. I was, like, okay, well, they need a child safe kit, too. Okay, they need this, too. And, like, I don't, know. I don't know what you did. But if you didn't do that, if what you're saying is true, that's that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem there. You know, you got to tell them, who do you know? You got to use the vibs. Who can we brainstorm? Okay, great. Yep. Now, of course, when we go sit down with your beneficiaries to get that paperwork out to them, we'll make sure they're in a good spot and don't need anything as well. 
But other than that, who else? Right? And then at the very end, 90% of my job I love is when you know, I'm helping families out, walking, running around, you know, getting everyone taken care of. 10% of my job I hate is when I call people like your beneficiaries to do something that we have to do. And they hang up on me like I'm a crazy telemarketer, right? <laughs> so could you do me one more favor? Could you call your beneficiaries right now and get them on the phone? That way I can guarantee I get them on my schedule because out of all these 15 people you gave me, I, I'll do my best to get to all of them, but I have to get to your beneficiaries. So the only way I've noticed I can guarantee I sit down with somebody is if the client actually, if you actually call them from your phone while I'm here, you know what I mean, Mary? That way I can guarantee they're on my schedule. So go ahead and give them a call. Hey, Faith. Hey, Faith. This is Vince Masseri with American Income. We handle some of your mama's benefits there. Or no, we're your mother's life insurance company through the Carpenters. I'll say the union. I won't just say like your mom's life insurance company. Your mom's life insurance company through the Carpenters, local 250. How you doing today? You got to bring the, the, the conviction, the passion, the punctuation on these contingent calls. That could prevent no shows too. Great. I'm doing great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm just actually here with your mom right now. That's the other thing, rolling them while you're with the mom. Way less likely to no-show. You roll them while you're with the mom. See you then, honey. All right, say bye to mom. The Bye, mom. All right, bye. You know, that's that's even more of a, that's less of a reason to no-show. Anyway, sit down with your mom here. We were over here. She's got a she's got a parakeet in the corner. It's, it's repeating everything I say. I think it was swearing at me earlier. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we, we, we love your mom. We've been here for probably a little bit too long. And, um, you know, uh, we were just doing one of her final reviews, getting everything situated in her policy. And she actually entrusted you to be a beneficiary. I won't even say contingent if they're going to, if you're looking at, if you're getting no-showed a lot, tell them they're the prime. Like, don't even say contingent. Don't say might be either. You might be the one spending that. You might be the one getting the money. That's why they're going to no-show. So, you, you know, you, she actually put you down as the beneficiary on the life insurance policy there. So, God forbid... When she does die, when something happens to her, you will be the one handling all the money. And, and Mary, it, it's definitely a lot of money. Is this making sense so far? I will stop the script right there and say, is this making sense so far? Before you go into one and two and what time you get home, you'd be the one handling all the money. Does this make sense so far? Okay, great. So I just need to give you a call and make sure that you, one, accepted that responsibility of being a beneficiary. You do accept that responsibility, correct? Okay, now, two, if you do, it's just my job to come out there, sit down with you and your husband, and get you out to prove of death for it. It's the same shit I just told Mary. Keep it simple for your own brain. Two, if you do, it's just my job to come sit down with you and your husband, get you out the beneficiary paperwork, the claims forms all the necessary paperwork you would need to file a death claim and just explain to you what your responsibilities would be when that day comes. Does that make sense, Mary? Great, great. Only problem is I am slammed. They got me running around out here with all the union members. They're my main priority. And we've been here for about 12 days now, trying to service over 160 members, just like your mother. And uh, these are our last few days. So I know that, I know that your home now is your husband home. No, he's not. Okay, what time does he get home later? Like eight. Like eight. So we can put you down before I leave the area. Anytime between eight and nine tonight, or my last day is tomorrow. I can put you. What time do you and your husband get home tomorrow? Like. I guess it's not even like a lead. I'm just like, it's happening. This is about a life insurance rule and regulation. It's not a. It's not a if. It's not a variable. It's this is happening. Oh, it gets home tomorrow at 12. Great. I can put you down for any time between 12 and one or any time between one and two tomorrow. Any time between eight and nine tonight or any time between one and two tomorrow. Which one works best for you and the husband? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now go ahead and grab me a pen and piece of paper. Do you have them do that? Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 For sure. You send him a link while they're on the phone. Yeah. That's what, yeah. But you have them write it down. Yeah, and I made sure they got it too. Okay, so they make sure they write it down. You send them a link on the phone, just like we look for a normal lead. Write down my name, the appointment time, quality control confirmation code. And we used to do this over, you know, typically back in the day, we would do this over, you know, in, in the kitchen table. We're very old school for the past 70 years. Now, obviously, we're sitting down with your mom over Zoom. So, you know, have you ever heard of Zoom? Great. I'll send you an email, pop you in the Zoom meeting. You can see me at 
back and see you. We can work through the whole beneficiary process and get you all squared away. What's your Zoom link? What's your Zoom or what's your email? Okay, great. I'm sending it right now. Mom's probably going to kick me out if I don't get out of here soon. So I'm going to do this really quick. All right. You got the link? Great. All right. Perfect. Now I'll solidify. Do you see any reason why it wouldn't work for you? Like I said, union members are my, 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 my main priority. I can't even talk. Union members are my main priority. So I got to make sure since you're a beneficiary, if I put you down for 11 to 1, does that work for you? You're positive? I would do three solidifications if you're having a problem with it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because we're running around with 8 to 11 members a day. So if I say I'm going to be there, I won't miss you. I promise I'll be there. You don't have your word, you'll be there as well? Great. We'll see you on Tuesday anytime between 12 and 1. Got the link? Good. You got the link? Great. All you got to do is click that link. That way everything's as easy as possible for Friday. Oh, Mary, I almost forgot. By the way, uh, me and your mom were talking about this earlier. Since you have access, since you are part of the family, you, you'll actually have access to the same union benefits package that your mom did today. Here's the thing. You won't have to pay all those union dues, be a part of the union. You could hate the union. Doesn't even matter. You'll actually be able to have access to all your mom's union benefits when we when we uh, come sit down with you, even though you're not in the union. Now, the only problem is a lot of people like your mother try to qualify for their union benefits. It's just since they're at a union negotiated rate, not everybody can. But we'll go over that more when I see you. The main thing we got to do is get you out that beneficiary paperwork. Does that sound good? So maybe that's another thing you might have been missing. I tell them you'll have access and you don't have to be in the union, pay the union dues. That builds exclusivity, builds value. I'll also tell them the only problem is when I'm feeling a little bit frisky, I'm feeling a little bit more in control in this sit. I'll say only problem is everybody always tries to qualify for the union benefits, but since they're at a union rate, not everybody can. Building value, building exclusivity, taking it away before I would sit down with them. But we can go over that more when I sit down with you. And here's the thing that makes it look like it doesn't matter to me. The main thing we got to do is get you out the beneficiary paperwork and be on our way. That's going to help them think no matter what happens, you don't care about the sale. It's not about the life insurance to you. It's about the beneficiary paperwork. You do that, you solidify. I don't see any reason why too many should do it, but over Zoom, I'm not going to say that they won't. Just keep going, keep going. Next contingent, next referral, next contingent, next referral. Call the lady back. You know how I told you since all that unclaimed life insurance went unclaimed in 2013 that we had to sit down with your wife? We, she hasn't been able to, she actually no-showed that appointment or not no-showed. She actually wasn't able to pick up the phone. I'm not sure what happened. Have you talked to her? I hope everything's okay. I was thinking about doing that. Yeah, because I can't finalize your policy and add her as a beneficiary until we sit down with her. So can you give her a call back real quick and make sure that she answers my phone? We got to get her back on the schedule. What are they going to say? No. Take her off the list as a beneficiary then. All right, fine. Did you call your other referrals? How are the kids? Whatever. All right, guys. All we got time for today. What I just told you right there is how you're going to hit your 10K and how you're going to hit your committed. You work up to it week one, two, and three. You get good at it. You keep practicing. You don't go backwards. You fail forwards, and we'll be all right. I promise you, 10K is nothing. 10K is nothing. If Ashley can do it, you guys can do it. Thanks, Vince. Thank you.